Welcome back, Zero K fans. Tonight, only this is Dawn. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury 333, whichever you prefer. And we are on to Fairyland with Golda versus Fieldthus. Not Titan Duel, as I previously mentioned, because apparently the Titan Duel match was not very good. So, no, we're not going to do that one. We're going to do this one. Let's begin. Golda going for the Amp Bot Factory. And we have shields from Fieldthus. So, a bit of a reversal from last time where Fieldthus was the Amp Bot Factory. Though, I'm curious why. Because while this map does technically have water, there's no easy way to, to get to it at all. Like, it's pretty much just a way of cutting off the map. I mean, it looks pretty. It just isn't really functional. So I'm curious what's going to happen here. I'm guessing it's really just a matter of using the unit types that Gota wants to use rather than anything to do with the water. But again, you know, duck versus shields. That's something we saw before. Doesn't work especially well, so I'd be curious to see if Golda goes for archers as we saw Fieldthos do last game. And at this point, Fieldthos expanding a little bit slower than Golda. Golda went for the recon comms, so they have a bit faster movement speed. But Fieldthos going for the economy commander, meaning, of course, they have a bit faster build time. Still, though, it, no, that's definitely Fieldthos' advantage. They've, they've won out. The higher build power takes it. Especially now that Fieldhouse does have enough metal to make that higher build power work, but that's really a matter of... Well, that's really a matter of not letting their production happen either at the same time. So, Golda right now does have a bit of an advantage in terms of units on the field, and I don't know if that's going to be a problem. At this stage in the game, it likely won't be, just considering that we are dealing with the super early game. But hey, a duck was killed by a bandit. So, that's a lot of value. Or at least even value. It's, it's more metal against Golda, but yeah, that's... That is going to be even value, and I'm curious if Gold is going to switch over, and no, at this point they're not. They're sticking to ducks. Why they're sticking to ducks is just because I hadn't seen an update yet. It is, in fact, going to be archers. We are seeing the archers as I was hoping we'd see. So that is definitely a thing that people are doing now. I mean, Gold of all people that I expect them to do, just because they know the game pretty well. And I think that's also why we're seeing a lot of shield bots recently, is that we're seeing amph bots become a thing. I mean, amph bots have been a thing for a while, and amph bot is better against Cloaky than against Shields. Or at least Ducks are better against Glaives than against Bandits, to be more specific. But considering that Archers are an option, I'm curious what Fieldhouse will do. We did see them deal with this, but I have a feeling that just considering that this is a match that happened slightly before the Adansonia match we saw, like it happened the day prior to the Adansonia match, that Fieldhouse took what they learned in this match and used it against RAR. I think that's what happens. So I'm curious what is going to happen if Fieldhouse does have any ideas for countering it. And they do, in fact, have some rogues. They are immediately going for the rogues to take out the archers, so they know well enough that they need to deal with those archers at range. I like that. I like that they are making that adaptation early on. But I don't see a whole lot of them, just the one. Although, at the same time, is Fieldhouse doing repeat build? No, they're not doing repeat build, that's why. Okay, so Fieldhouse is just playing this like StarCraft. <laughs> have to go back and keep adding new units to the queue... Anytime they want to add units to the queue, it's... I don't like using that myself, but... Eh, whatever. If it works. However, at this point, it does mean that their factories are idle. Both Gota and Fieldhouse have idle factories and are rapidly risking excess, though Gota right now going for an extremely early Grizzly. They're pushing 25 metal into the factory per second to get this Grizzly up as quickly as possible, and they're actually going to be able to succeed. I mean, they have 500 metal in storage. They have enough to at least get... Well, a quarter of the Grizzly out. But on top of that, they have 25 metal per second, or 29 metal per second. So this alone isn't actually going to be cutting into the storage too much. Just with 25 build power being pushed into this. So, yeah, this is... Like, yeah, this is fine. This is actually going to be especially efficient and is not going to be bottlenecked by the by the storage. In fact, they could, they could easily put more on here and it would just go faster. I kind of wish they would, too, because they're getting close to excessing. Well, on the other hand, feel with us... Going for a very quick Felon, which is not a bad choice. I mean, it does have the range, it does have a lot of accuracy as well. So it's not going to be having to worry as much about dealing with dealing with archers as they're pushing the rest of the army away. It's just, it just deals with them. Or as archers dodge away. Like, that's the thing. That's the thing that rogues have to deal with, is that highly mobile units are a problem for them to deal with. Felons don't have that problem. But the Felons, on the other hand, do require a lot of shields for support, and they also are... I mean, they're pretty much a one-shot unit. Once they fire off their shields, they're done. I mean, done, done. Like, they have no defenses either. Still, though, Fieldhouse is managing to maintain a decent control over the map. They are a bit behind economically compared to Golda, 
Especially as Golda did take the Northwest expansion, but the Northwest expansion very likely is going to be taken apart by these ban by these bandits if they decide to. I'm curious if they're actually going to go for it. But that is an option. They are in position to do that. They will be able to get rid of the ducks should they choose to. And everything back here is just going to be the commander trying to defend against it. And a recon commander against five bandits. It's kind of an even match, honestly. Especially given that the recon commander has not been leveled up any. And now the ducks have gone a little bit out of position. That does leave things open. Field Thoughts can take the northwest. Now at the same time, the Grizzly is on the way. But it's going to be a minute or so before it manages to actually be brought to bear properly. This, open up the, this opens up the entire northwest side. And that will mean Golda, their slight economic advantage... Well, it's gone already, though. Ignoring the re ignoring the excess right now. Which has not really been dealt with. There are a couple of characters being built up, which will help with that. But it's a little bit late, sadly. Still, though, Golda is going to lose this, or should theoretically... Yeah. It's lost. It's fully known. Fieldus got it. Fieldus should have a couple of bandits. No, there's the convict. There's some bandits to defend it. They have a convict over here to take the metal up in the north side. And that leaves the southeast, which is also being taken by Fieldthaws. They, they've got an economic advantage at hand. Of course, the Grizzly now being brought to bear against a lot of units that are really good at dealing with a, a smaller armies. Or rather, armies built of smaller units. Not so good at dealing with a single heavy unit. Felon is going to completely burn all of its shields trying to attack that thing. In fact, is he on hold fire? No, it's not hold fire, so it will go after it. I mean, assuming it even keeps its shields around long enough to do so. So that does mean it's entirely up to the rogues to take out this grizzly, and possibly the bandits as well, but with the archers there, it's not an easy task. With the felon down as well, this is a field day for Golda. They can easily push in here. I mean, these fel these rogues are going to be a small thorn in the side of that grizzly, but it's not really that bad. Especially since Golda can easily just have units going anywhere else on the map. Deal with this stuff no problem. I mean, the duck over in the southeast... They have this. Well, actually, no, the Lotus has it. They, the Lotus will stop them here. But in the Northwest, it's going to be difficult for Fieldtoss to hold this with the units they have. I mean, they have rogues, but the Grizzlies can still power through them. Enough rogues will stop the Grizzly, yes. But this isn't enough rogues. And the Felon wasn't a bad idea against the Archers, but there's no Felon left. So at this point, it's really difficult to have any effective push from Fieldhouse onto Gota when Gota has all these units that are going to be, be taking back the Northwest. Completely nullifying everything that was done in the Northwest there. And that is... Wow. Okay. That is a bit of confusion of over getting knocked out of the map entirely. But anyway, that convict, they might terraform the way back in, but I actually don't think they can. No, I'm pretty sure they're stuck. I'm pretty sure they have to be terraformed up from the top and find their way back that way. And actually, I'm not even sure that would... No, that would work. They'd have to set up, but no. It looks like Field Toss is just having itself destruct for, I guess, reasons of getting it out of the way. It can't see up the cliffs. It's not like it's doing much good. Still, though, Field Toss with the Racketeers, despite their nerfs, despite their cost increase... Oh, no, this is earlier. This is before the cost increase. This is before the nerfs. So, Racketeers are very likely a natural choice because of that, and that is going to mean the Grizzly will have less room to maneuver. Still, though, Goldas has managed to turn this into a, well, a fairly large economic push. Got rid of a few of Fieldhoss's metal extractors. They got rid of about six metal per second from Fieldhoss. Trying to push it themselves, but at the same time, this is too hotly contested to easily be taken. And now, with the army pushed back from Fieldhoss, this Grizzly could go down. The commander could go down. Golda, I believe, is prepared. I think I saw storage. I actually didn't see storage. Never mind. Gota is not prepared for this. If they lose their commander, they are going to be losing quite a bit of energy. No metal, though. They have that set up properly. But Fieldhouse has the economic advantage. They have the southeast securely. They have pretty much the entire eastern side securely. And they're taking this near east side as well. So I'm I'm pretty confident in Fieldhouse's chances right now. And the Racketeers are continuing to pour in as well, so that does mean the Grizzly is going to have a much harder... Grizzlies, plural, I'm sorry. There are more than one. There are, in fact, three. And yeah, the Racketeers are going to make that a little bit harder. Although, interestingly, we are seeing a Cornea being built. Very likely to become an Iris, which I suppose would be just to sneak around these Goliaths. Sorry, these Grizzlies, not Goliaths. We're not using tanks. <laughs> sneak around these Grizzlies. Why am I thinking tanks? Sneak around these Grizzlies. And that would be interesting, but at the same time... A little bit moot. I mean, Fieldhouse knows where they are. 
It's just a matter of field class getting the armies needed to deal with them. And the Racketeer is basically what it is that's needed to deal with this stuff. Of course, the problem is that between the Grizzlies and the Archers, it's rather difficult to push this. Like, the thing is, there, Felons... I mean, as Google Fox pointing out in the spectator chat during the replay, that was something that could have been done. Like, the Felons could have been on hold fire, which would have been really handy to avoid them burning their shields against the Grizzlies, where it's not really useful. And this is the thing, now that the, now the shields are burned, the Archers can theoretically move in. It's just that the wall of racketeers is making it so that they can't actually do anything should they move in. And one thing I'd almost like to see is a switch over to air and... Ah, switch to gunship. Okay, I was thinking switch to air and then just carpet bomb a little bit. Either ravens or phoenixes or thunderbird. I mean, thunderbird is often the way to go. But given that they have the racketeers, they could use the racketeers for the disabling and use anything else for the damage. But with the gunship plant, I'm curious what we're going to see, and it looks like it is going to be a Nimbus. Going to be a lot of Nimbuses. Countering the Grizzlies? Yeah, that's a good choice. When we saw it last game that it's a little iffy if you don't have some ground support force to make that work, but I think this is one of the situations where that ground support force does exist. But I only I say I think because at the same time that ground support force is being decimated regularly during this fight. I mean, the Racketeers are doing what they can, but it's only stunning the Grizzly for two or three seconds at a time, and that is enough. Or rather, disarming for two or three seconds at a time, not stunning. That's the thing, it's just not enough to make that work. And now with the Iris up, this is going to be a very difficult army to fight, because now they can't just Racketeer into the bowl. I mean, yeah, the Iris exists, but... I mean, sorry, the forces are there. Fielas knows they're there, but doesn't know specifically where they are. So at this point, there's not much hope other than the Nimbus, and even then, that's essentially just attack straight into it. And now Fieldhouse going for the push, because what else can they do, really? Maybe, maybe find the Iris. Maybe manage to get some mileage out of that. They can figure out where the heck Irises are. But they can't. Or they're not going for it at this point, at least. Still, though, with the Nimbus here, that is enough to provide enough spread fire to make the units visible to allow the Racketeers to do their job, and that is the key thing. Completely nullifying the cloaking, and that means there's a chance for Fieldhouse to get back in here, but Golda has managed to take an economic advantage during this time, which could still lead to a win later on, but it doesn't even matter if the army's gone. There's not much more to be said, and the Felons are finding their target. They are getting the archers, which is exactly what they want, and the Nemesis, they're managing to push pretty hard here. In fact, making Gold's commander regret their last decision of making that Razor, and it is indeed their last decision. As the commander goes down, Golda loses the energy storage, and loses a fair bit of metal income as well. So right now, Gota is not in a happy position. There's no anti-air being built up yet. There is some in production. A few anglers are being built after this emergency grizzly, but it's probably not going to be enough. All these grizzlies dying, that's going to be 2,400 metal in reclaim just from the grizzlies alone. On top of that, there's also the commander and all the archers, everything else that's been in this army. It's going down, too. So, really, there's not much here that Fieldhouse can do wrong other than throw their armies away. Now, granted, they did lose a lot of forces in that last engagement, which isn't great. However, they also managed to push back the Grizzly, and all this metal is in their territory. So, they're going to be quite happy. I mean, the amount of the reclaiming right now, 2,600 metal reclaim. They could easily throw two or three more constructors on this, and they'd be fine. On top of the Strider Hub being built, yeah, they are good. Just put two or three... And there it is. There's the, actually four coming in here. Four convicts. That's 20 build power. That's 20 metal per second being added from all this reclaim. That's a good two minutes at 50 metal per second with all the reclaim that they have to work with. This is going to be difficult for Gota to deal with. Gota is quite behind economically. They're ahead militarily, or at least they're ahead in terms of attrition. In terms of unit value, they're dead even. They're about a thousand metal behind, but at this point, that is a small percentage of their force. So honestly, this is not bad. This isn't like Gota completely falling apart. They've got a chance at this, but Fieldthos does have an advantage, and particularly in terms of unit types, we just ignore cost for a second. Racketeers, despite the owling they've received, are still quite effective, and they're still quite pivotal in dealing with these Goliaths, dealing with these Grizzlies. I don't know why I keep calling them that, because Goliath was a tank unit. It, it's now called... Not Minotaur now. What is it called now? It's... Well, regardless, it's not being played now. It's Grizzly, I'm trying to think of. Yeah, with five Nemesis coming in, no anti-air apart from the Anglers, which are here, actually, but 
again, racketeers. There's a dozen of them. No, sorry, eight of them. Not quite a dozen, but still enough that this is going to be pretty nice. I mean, Philthos, they've got a strong army. They have also a cloaked army as well. So two cloaked armies against each other. Why not set up the irises? I mean, Philthos reeling their army first, granted, but still, the racketeers are all cloaked. Bandit's not sure what they're trying to... Oh, I see. They're trying to get in under... Get the anglers from close up, which is not a bad option. But now with the convicts going down, that's the reclaim gone. Still, though, Field Boss managed to get quite a lot of value off that reclaim. They've gotten... A, well, they managed to basically equal out gold as reclaim from earlier. But it is worth noting Field Boss has kind of been playing catch-up, especially as they're losing this. Nimbus is not focusing on them at all, not controlling them at all, trying to get rid of these grizzlies, which would be a fine goal if it weren't for the fact that the anglers are there stopping all of them from existing. And now Field Boss does not have any forward force. They do have a scorpion. They don't have any Nimbuses, though. It's up to the racketeers to maintain the line for as long as they can. But right now, it's really just a question of Golda rebuilding all these metal extractors, reclaiming all this metal. And when that happens, Fieldhouse is no longer going to have their metal advantage. They had a strong metal advantage. They used their metal advantage. It's 5,000 metal used advantage. But in terms of unit value, they're still at a dead heat with Golda. And that's after the Scorpion got built. So really, the Scorpion is their only hope. They don't have a whole lot else. They have some bandits. They have some rogues, both of which are nice. Obviously, they're not going to be going for anything else besides that. And the archers are finding some difficulty. They can't really push that scorpion too far away. But again, the scorpion is just trying to find something, some way of EMPing. And it does find some EMP on one of the grizzlies, which that could be enough. That grizzly is unable to move, unable to fire, still unable to fire. I mean, it's disarmed as well as EMP'd. But the problem is the Scorpion does not have much life left in it. One more shot, and that Grizzly's going to get that shot off right now. That Scorpion goes down, and Fieldhouse loses pretty much their last-ditch hope at getting back in this game. Despite the fact that they had an economic disadvantage, and even with the fact that they have these rogues, that is nice. That will help. They managed to get rid of these anglers. That will be enough room to open up more, more gunships. But these rogues, they're the last, last hope. I mean, if there was already a last hope with the Scorpion... I mean, at this point, I'm not even sure what can happen. We don't need bandits coming in to try to deal with the Iris, and honestly, they'd be dying to do so to get rid of the ar the archers. And the rogues being pushed off of the map entirely by the archers. There is very little that Fieldthos has to deal with this stuff. What they have is being used effectively. It's just what they have left. What they do, however, have is an economic advantage. They can still outbuild Gorda on top of the defender's advantage. As long as the Grizzlies go down, every Grizzly that goes down is a massive blow to Gorda's forces in terms of what they can actually deal with. And considering that these bandits can get in quite close to the arcs before getting pinned, that means they can get more damage in as well. On top of that, the rogues, they aren't being dodged as effectively just for the same reason. So right now, Fieldhouse does have an economic advantage. They are, however, a little behind in attrition, but... They have their economy, they have their production, they're right next to their base. Golda has to go across the entire map, and right now is building a lot of grizzlies. So if, if this wave is destroyed early, that means there's just a handful of grizzlies and that's it. But it looks like Fieldhouse is still struggling. They're doing everything they can, they're pushing everything they can into rogues. But again, unit value is, a, is still even. Because getting rid of these grizzlies is a tough job. I mean, they have to get rid of the conjurer, or the the conches. But if they get rid of the conches, okay, that's good. That that opens up the grizzly. Still, though, the conches are often out of range to actually be gotten rid of. Gorda is doing a great job positioning them to stop it from being a problem. Of course, at the same time, there's the rogue coming in and not, oh, not quite managing to find their mark either. And now the archer's completely pushing in here. All the rock, all the racketeers are done. Completely pushed out of, or half of them are pushed out of the map into the water. The other half, there's not much that can be done with that, and Fieldhouse realizes this is it, and I... Yeah, they're probably going to throw in the towel at this point, because what, what can they do? Most of their army is in the water, and the rest of their army is on the ground. I think this is why they used archers in the next match, because or in the match we saw previously, because archer... Archer is a hell of a unit. I mean, that's... I, we saw it before, it did a lot of good, it got some raiding done, but on a map like this with all these cliffs, 
the archer just can nullify an entire army in a way a racketeer can only dream of. So that was quite the demonstration. Anyway, next map, not going to be as dramatic, fewer cliffs, is going to be Golda and Google Frog on Alien Desert. So, well, actually, also, Steel Blue pointing out they're winning on a disadvantage. In terms of unit value, they were even across the entire game. In terms of metal, yes. But those Grizzlies got loads and loads of value each. Like, look at this. They got made cost, made double cost. I mean, a few of them died, sure, but most of them made cost well enough that it didn't matter. So while Field House did occasionally have some advantages here and there, Golda did as well, and it just kept going back and forth for unit value. Basically, Field House built more, Field House lost more. So it was just efficient, it was efficient use of units by Golda, and Field House had a hard time really answering that, in large part because with Shieldbot Factory there aren't a lot of great answers to Grizzly. There's Rogue, but that fires really slowly and it's easy to dodge. There's Thug, kind of, but... That just gets pushed through easily with the beams. Felon is work, worth it for archers, but not worth it for the grizzly. And it's difficult, not impossible, but difficult to make it go for the one or the other. You have to hold fire, and then you have to target all the archers, and that can be a pain in the butt. So, it's a difficult situation for Shieldbot Factory in this matchup. Very clearly. Anyway, that match being done, we are going to have Golda versus Google Frog on Alien Desert up next. So, stay tuned for that. Because I'm curious how this is handled on a flat map. We've seen Golda on a hilly map. Are they going to go? I don't think they're going to go for Amphib here. But I almost wonder. I'm. They, maybe. I doubt it. But it'd be kind of cool. It'd be kind of silly. But it'd be kind of cool. Anyway, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. Why is it? 